ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम right we'll begin so far we have been able to establish the conditions for microwave activity involving the z component of the dipole moment right and the conditions we have established while you utilizing the z component are first of all the molecule must have a permanent dipole moment mu0 should be non zero secondly delta j must be plus minus 1 right and thirdly delta m must be equal to 0 now we proceed to discuss what happens when you work with the x component or the y component of the dipole moment which of these conditions hold which of these conditions do not hold right so we are continuing with our condition for microwave activity maybe i'll call it second part of our discussion okay we start with the known premise we start with the transition moment integral but suppose we are now interested in mu x i'm only going to work out mu x because mu y follows exactly the same kind of discussion as mu x okay what is mu x you told me in the previous class mu 0 sin theta cos phi and right away you can see that our discussion is going to be a little more complicated than uh, what it was for the z component okay z component is the same plus it will be complicated but uh, not impossible and not so complicated also let us see transition moment integral when we talk about the x component is something like this and since we have done it once already can i write the product right away can i step jump a little bit so i'll write like this some normalization condition n fine i'll start writing the integrals one will be for phi for that limits will be 0 to 2 pi and here you have e to the power i delta m phi but that's not all right there's an additional uh, phi part here it comes from mu x isn't it cos phi if you work with the y component it will be sin phi okay so this multiplied by cos phi d phi so is this a complete phi part that we have written what comes out from here mu zero should come out once again isn't it this multiplied by integral limits with 0 to pi p j m dash what do i get this time i don't get cos theta i get sin theta p j mod m okay i forgot to write what this is cos theta then what do i write here is it d theta or is it something else sin theta d theta so this is the transition moment integral written as a product of the constituent terms let us check once what is x component of dipole moment mu 0 sin theta cos phi mu 0 cos phi sin theta so i have written 
uh, all the factors for uh, dipole moment. What are the uh, phi parts of the wave function e to the power i m phi right out of which for the dashed wave function you need to take the complex conjugate. So, I get e to the power i delta m phi like what we got for your uh, z component. Additionally, you have this cos phi which comes in in the phi part of the integral ok. So, first one is in 0 to 2 pi e to the power i m i delta m phi multiplied by cos phi d phi that is multiplied by integral 0 to pi p j m dash as usual p j dash m dash sorry j dash m dash of cos theta multiplied by sin theta multiplied by p j mod m of cos theta multiplied by sin theta d theta. So, far so good everything in place sure. Now, we will go ahead we will try to evaluate as usual the integral separately. I had called the integrals i 1 and i 2 in the previous class. So, here let us call them i 3 and i 4. Okay. To work out i 3 it will be easier if we write everything either in your uh, uh, trigonometric form or in the exponential form. In fact, I prefer the exponential form because we know already how to solve it right. So, remember we had said e to the power i k phi is equal to cos k phi plus i sin k phi. Of course, e to the power minus i k phi is cos k phi minus i multiplied by sin k phi. So, from here it is not very difficult for us to work out this relationship cos k phi is equal to half multiplied by e to the power i k phi plus e to the power minus i k phi. Is that right? Right? And I can substitute it here. Right? And in this case k is equal to 1. So, what I really need is cos phi equal to half multiplied by e to the power i phi plus e to the power minus i phi. What does i 3 boil down to then? i 3 becomes 0 to 2 pi e to the power i delta m phi multiplied by ok I do not even care about the half, but let me write it e to the power i phi plus e to the power minus i phi d phi. I think you have understood the solution already have not you. This boils down to half of integral 0 to 2 pi e to the power i delta m plus 1 phi d phi plus integral 0 to 2 pi e to the power i delta m minus 1 phi d phi right. And we already know the two conditions one when delta m is equal to 0 and one when delta m is not equal to 0 that is what we had used earlier. What is the condition we have to use here? One is when delta m plus minus 1 is equal to 0 and the other when delta m plus minus 1 is not equal to 0 right. Uh, if there is a doubt please ask. Gurjot understood? Sure. So, can I write something like this? i 3 is not equal to 0. Uh, in fact, i 3 equal to 2 pi when delta m plus minus 1 equal to 0 that is delta m equal to well minus plus 1 you can write plus minus 1 we will just write it minus plus in order to become consistent. 
and I 3 equal to 2 pi when delta m minus plus 1 is not equal to 0, so, which brings us to a different condition from what we had using the z direction. In this case, delta m equal to 0 is not a favorable condition, delta m must be equal to plus minus 1. If there is a, any doubt about the math, this is the time to ask, then we will go on with the discussion. Do you have a question? Yeah, of course, either delta m plus 1, what she is asking is at any one point of time, either delta m plus 1 will be 0 or delta m minus 1 will, will be equal to 0, obviously, yes. So, I am writing the two conditions together as delta m equal to plus minus 1. Vibha, understood? Sure? Any question, any doubt? Anyone? Are we all comfortable with this? We can go ahead. Yeah, yes. Yes, not equal to 0, is that what I have written? 2 pi when delta m plus minus 1 is equal to 0. Oof. that is called inertia of motion, of course 0, I said 0 perhaps, but I wrote 2 pi, are we clear, sure. So, now see we have a different condition, this is the condition where for when you work with mu z, but for when we work with mu x, then delta m has to be equal to plus minus 1. What will happen if I work with mu y? Same, because instead of cos phi, I am going to get sin phi. So, if I get sin phi, how do I have to write this? Uh, cos phi is e to the power i phi plus e to the power minus i phi multiplied by half. Sin phi is simply one subtracted from the other, you have to divide by i, that is all. Yes, multiply by minus i or divide by i, same thing. So, are we all convinced that for mu x? as well as mu y, the condition will be delta m equal to plus minus 1, okay. I think we will come back to this and discuss uh, the physical significance of it after we have done our discussion of time dependent perturbation theory. I already did little bit of it while talking about the z component, but x and y let us come back to it later, yes. What she is saying is uh, it is complementary. Suppose we work with isotropic light, if I may expand your question, isotropic light x, y, z all components are there, right. And then uh, delta m equal to 0, delta m equal to plus minus 1 both will be, uh, both will be allowed, yes right. Delta m equal to plus minus 2 will not be allowed. Huh? See delta m equal to plus minus 1 will be allowed if you work with x and y component. What happens when delta m equal to plus minus 2? Yeah. So, if you work with isotropic light, of course, z component of it can be absorbed with the condition delta m equal to 0. x and y can be absorbed with delta m equal to plus minus 1, that is right. But what about delta j? That is what we have not discussed so far, we will come back to it. The one, one more thing, mu 0 has come out of the integral here also. So, no matter what direction you consider x, y or z, permanent dipole moment has to be there, that is an absolutely essential condition, okay. Molecules that are not dipolar cannot absorb microwave, H2 cannot absorb microwave, HCl can absorb microwave, okay. Now, let us come back and let us talk about I3. Now, let us talk about I4 now, we have already discussed I3. The discussion that we are doing today and what we did uh, in the previous class is available in Gray Beale's book, okay. Now, let us talk about I4. Again, uh, instead of z, let me write q this time. So, let me say q is cos theta. 
as usual dq would be minus sin theta d theta okay but i have two sin thetas one here and one there what one thing i can do is i can just multiply one by the other and write sin square theta but it actually makes more sense if i don't because i know very well that i have to convert this to dq so let it be how do i handle this sin theta exactly so sin theta will be 1 minus q square square root of that okay does that ring a bell do we see where we are going okay so i4 in that case becomes again i'll change the limits right i'll change the limits and make it minus 1 to plus 1 because i don't want to write that minus explicitly this becomes p j dash i'll keep m dash for now multiplied by square root of 1 minus q square multiplied by p j mod m of q dq okay now look at this if you remember in the previous class we had shown you three different recursion formulas one was what happens when z is multiplied with this uh, polynomial the other two were something like this again i write the right hand side first uh, which alphabets uh, which letters have we used already a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 right so let me write d1 d2 now d1 pj mod m pj plus 1 mod m of z plus d2 p j minus 1 mod m z and on the left hand side if you remember we had square root of 1 minus z square p j mod m plus minus 1 right what I have done is I have written the two recursion formulae that I had showed you in the previous class in one ok. So, now first of all mod m equal to mod m plus minus 1 that fits in very nicely with the condition delta m equal to plus minus 1. Actually the agreement is so good that I will not blame you if you think that all this is just back calculation. The agreement I mean things are falling into place uh, beautifully right, but the thing is they fall into place beautifully because you can actually describe everything using mathematics. If you are uh, a Dan Brown fan or at least if you have read Dan Brown books, you would have read in some book of his where he has said that mathematics is the purest form of language, right. So, uh, that is what it is and everything see the earth going around the sun, you can write a mathematical equation for it, even uh, the cells dividing and all disease everything can be modeled using mathematics. So, this uh, agreement is fascinating but it is not back calculation let me just tell you that ok. So, now I think our discussion is complete all we have to do is use this recursion formula and expand this uh, expand this expression. If I use this recursion formula what do you get? Are you familiar with this uh, bracket notation right? So, I will write it in that way for a change you get something like this you get of course d1 multiplied by p j dash m dash p j plus 1 m and you already know the relationship between m and m dash so I am not writing well actually they will be the same here well no, does not matter plus d2 p j dash mod m dash p j minus 1 m here I have not written the uh, q in bracket I hope that is not a problem. So, from these two what is the selection rule that we get once again 
again delta j equal to plus minus 1 right because as we discussed earlier these polynomials also form orthonormal set. So, this integral is going to survive only when the two polynomials are the same. So, here also we get delta j equal to plus minus 1 all right. So, what is the only difference between uh, using the z component and using the x or y component? The only difference is delta m. Does it matter as far as the uh, position of the lines is concerned? It does not right because all the m's are actually they are degenerate right they have the same energy. Energy is b into j into j plus 1 m does not arise there right. So, there is no problem really. So, with this we have completed our discussion of uh, derivation of the conditions for microwave activity. Now that we know this we are in a position to go on and discuss the spectra in a little more detail.